Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is 2023, the first day of the year, January 1st. And I have started this live stream an hour later than normal because we were doing a little bit of celebrating last night for the new year coming in. I hope everyone that is listening to this is having a wonderful year so far. And I hope that your New Year's Eve was bright and merry and cheerful. But I'm feeling good today. Got some new music playing in the background. And today we're going to talk about the principles of composition. I've touched on composition before, but after identifying a clear curriculum for this course, for this live stream, I have determined that I need to get deeper into composition and give you guys an understanding of all of the awesome things that make you know, wonderful composition. And to do that, we're going to be hitting on a bunch of things today, such as dividing space and all of the aspects within that, such as rule of thirds, image edges and lines, um, negative space, POV, V and camera angle, exit lines and drawing through, small, medium and large. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about today is coming from uh, the creative composition course on svslearn.com that's svslearn.com and i would highly suggest that anyone here svslearn.com check out the creative composition course Very inexpensive. It's given by Will Terry. And everything that I've learned here is really come from that course and, you know, my multiple years of looking at composition. So I will be taking you through what he talks about um, in combination with everything that I've learned as well. So we have that. Now, what is composition? <clears throat> so defining composition is, is not super easy. You could say that it's, um, you know, just an organization of things. But in order to really define composition, we have to kind of have its alternates, like what is not composition. Um, so what is not composition is chaos. So we bring order to chaos. And then I would add in there that um, it's kind of a systematized approach. It's a step-by-step -step approach for composition. You know, we have ways to, des to design your image, uh, ways to, uh, of trying to organize and create this order and ultimately to tell a story. That's a very simple way of saying narrative, which is ultimately important within any piece of art you create. And only later in my art career did I realize how important that was. There's um, many pieces that I've created that haven't really had much composition. They've just been um, a figure on a page. Let's say, and, and a lot of what we do as artists when we're learning are just going to be um, a figure on a page or something in the center without a lot of composition. But it's the same as if you were going to build a house, right? For composition. You wouldn't just say, okay, let's just go start building the house. You know, the what you start with is a plan. Start with a plan. And this is what we're building when we're creating composition. To bring that order to um, any of your paintings, any of your art, anything that you do, starting with this compositional plan is always gonna help you bring order to the chaos that's in your head of what you're thinking, 
to identify the story a bit better and to communicate it a bit better. And <clears throat> one thing to talk about is, you know, the difference between you know, just randomly drawing or just uh, sketching, learning, and composition itself. When we are drawing something, our purpose, and a lot of what you've seen me do here on these live streams is, you know, if I, if I have a page here and I just start drawing a figure, Oof. let's try and get something to look like a figure there, Chris. Okay. So I start drawing this person. I'm not really thinking about composition. What I'm just trying to do is work on drawing some person and to make it look like a person, right? Or something. So that's just drawing. So if you're in life drawing, where you have a model in front, front of you and you're drawing from the model, it's not gonna be a lot of composition in there. Maybe you can, you can pull out um, composition. If you're learning anatomy, you're not worried too much about composition. Or just learning in general. Just learning art, you won't be creating a lot of compositions. It's when you get into, um, I want to actually make something that tells a story, then you get into, uh, how do I order things? Where's the foreground? Where's the background? Um, also, it, here's another example, is if you were writing um, an, an outline for a recipe. So you're built, you're, you want to cook something. Well, usually you'll start with a recipe sometimes, you know, if, if you want to know how to cook uh, lasagna or something, <laughs> some recipe you hasn't, you haven't uh, cooked before, then you need to start with that. And that's that those are principles that someone else has come up with. You look at famous uh, chefs, and they have principles within how to create their food. You know, what flavors work together. And it's the same thing with composition. We're gonna figure out what flavors work together and what, what works well. And I tried to define uh, really the difference between simple design and complex design. And it's really in a lot of cases, a simple design is if you're looking at a page of anything like you're on Instagram and the subject is like this, just a subject in the middle of a page. There's nothing really to it. Maybe it's a portrait or whatever. And we can look at a, a lot of examples of simple design through this because I'll be bringing up uh, my folder of all my collected imagery that I have, which I need to bring up right now. And actually most of what I have in here is going to be complex design. Most, but not all. So this is a drawing by I'm not sure who. So this person is, you know, making an amazing drawing. Look at that. That's, that's absolutely fantastic, that drawing. But there's no composition to it. It's what it is. It's this, the face on the page and uh, there's, there's not a lot of compose to it. So that's, it still has a design to it. There's some wonderful shapes within here, great shape language, great brush strokes, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think this is actually done traditionally, so that's, you know, fantastic. It'd be great to get this kind of feel into the digital realm, and we can totally do that. I'm gonna remember that for later, but that's a, a very simple design. Here's another one from the same artist. I wish I had their names. When you're collecting images, guys, make sure that you put down uh, the names on the image. This just has a date on it. So again, very simple composition, okay? Not much to it. You'll see a lot of, um, like these are some Russian academic drawings. There's no composition here. It's just, you know, look at the amazing drawing that is happening. There's also, 
I can look at uh, the art that I, I've done. So if I go to my paintings page, there's uh, many pieces of artwork that is not composed. It's really a, a figure on a page. Here's some ideas, of, some very good examples of simple composition. So maybe I'm composing the light here on these pieces of paper, but there's not really much composition here. It's just circle in the center. Circles in the center, basically. There's some com composition here, but for the most part, even though this is a, a complex painting with all kinds of stuff going on, it, the, 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 the subject's just right in the center, um, especially the one on the right. There is some composing going on with the background and Patrick on the left. You know, not much composing going on with, with a lot of these. And this is something that I realized later on in, in my career is that, wow, I haven't really dealt with composition. I'm just painting these these paintings uh, as they are. Happy New Year, Thinker. Thanks for joining me. I started much later today. <laughs> Stayed up a little bit later than normal. So we're going through the... The difference between simple composition and complex composition. I'm hitting on this again because I think it's a really important point. Now we're going to look at complex composition now. Simple composition, like I said, just circle on a page, you know, not much to it. Now complex composition will have, let's say, all kinds of actors. The actors could be a bed a window, a wall, multiple figures composed within a space all over the place, light coming in, hitting things, dark in a certain area. And what I'm trying to draw there is a bit of this painting. So this is The Passing of Robin Hood by N.C. Wyeth. If you want to really look at um, composing imagery. I'm going to zoom in on this painting so you can see some of the detail. Uh, if you want to look at composing um, anything, look at illustrators like N.C. Wyeth. Lots of composition. And I'm going to take you through this painting and how I used everything from the creative composition course and everything that I've learned from uh, designing a composition to really pull apart this painting and, and figure out what makes it tick. So this is, a, this is an example of complex composition because we have three figures. One, two, three. We also have some actors like this um, window right in the center. We have light that's kind of shooting in this way. We have a board up here that seems really random, but it's, it's functioning as a kind of a stop for an eye. The bed sheet is actually an actor. And it's interesting how everything, like most of the bodies are all pushed to the right. Well, everything's pushed to the right. And, but the focus is all right here. So we'll look at a lot of this today. And this is a fantastic example of composition. So that's the difference between simple, complex. And it's good to really understand that, what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with complex design, uh, compositions and complex uh, composing principles. The bigger um, like overriding principles for composition um, are divided into four spaces, basically. Uh, space, or you know, we can say dividing space. Sorry for my penmanship. Dividing space. Then we got balance. Unity. And emphasis. Okay. We're going to go through each of these in turn, but today we're going to be focusing on dividing space. So that's the big thing we're going to do. But I'm going to give you a quick overview on each one of these. So what is, when I say dividing space, um, in the, the SBS Learn course, he calls it space division, but I like dividing space because that's what you're doing. 
And it's really how we d divide up the image area. Uh, rule of thirds, golden rectangle, and so many other different ways of designing a space. Um, where do you, like for instance, this one, where do you put the main individuals, right? How is the space divided by uh, leading lines, edges, light? We divide, divide up that space. Uh, balance, uh, balance is, the, uh, is all about balancing the picture plane. You know, negative and, and positive space being weighted really well. Uh, so how can I get a, a quick example of that would be if we had just really quick on this, if we had two pages, bad balance would be if the only actor was over here and then good balance would be um, maybe right here, right? Especially if it was something that is traveling in a particular direction. Like someone is, uh, like a ball is moving in this direction and we can see that maybe it was some lines to it or something like that. We want that space to give it room. But if we have the ball here that's traveling in that kind of space to the right, we, we don't want things right up against the edge in a lot of ways. Yeah, probably not the best example. We'll get deeper into balance uh, later. Uh, unity. Unity is really interesting because um, this is something that I think a lot of artists struggle with a lot of time. I know I do. Is unifying everything within your picture. So this would be drawing color, value, all kinds of things that you could have. For example, if, if I have three items within my composition and the third one is using something completely different, you know, there's, there's not a lot of unity there. It kind of goes against unity. But if I have three objects using the same texture, the same brush, same everything, there's a unity within that. It's kind of like you can see an entire uh, created digital piece <clears throat> and all of a sudden in one location they use a completely different brush that really doesn't make sense. It's like, wow, that doesn't really make sense there. <laughs> and then last is emphasis. And we, we could use uh, the same example here by creating emphasis on something, which would be pretty easy, even in just a three color idea. This one has highlights on it, whatever it is. There's an emphasis there. So one item that has emphasis. You, a lot of times you'll see that done with light, you know, giving emphasis um, to one actor, one character within your story. So, we're gonna focus on dividing space. Let's move all that up. Dividing space. So it's kind of like uh, rearranging a room. We just moved to a new home in August and it's always a lot of fun when you move to a new place because you can figure out how you're gonna rearrange your office and your studio, where are you gonna put things, right? So we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put things. Now, when you're arranging something in your room, you could, you could just randomly kind of, you know, bring your desk in here and your easel and your bookshelf and things like that into a room and just kind of throw them in there and keep moving them around. But it could be better if, you know, you're figuring out through kind of a, a floor plan. Let's say, you know, well, you think the, the window's here and I want my desk to go this way. So there's the desk and then I want my easel over here and this is the closet and I want my lighting set up and everything here, my chair here, computer there. So I'm making this kind of plan. I'm like, yeah, you know, I like all that spacing. And then I can get to it right away. So this is what space division is, is kind of like. That's an analogy for space division. 
<clears throat> and just because you plan out your art within this composition, it really doesn't mean uh, when using composition that it's going to communicate well. It's going to have a wonderful narrative. But um, <clears throat> it will get you closer. The, your percentage for creating a better painting will go up when uh, you go through all these principles of composition. So even if you have a 10% better increase in, you know, better composition or, or better chances for your painting to be success, I would definitely take it. Heck, if it was only 5%, I would take it. So going through this composition is really important. And when you look at other compositions, like uh, the NCYF, paintings or any of the other paintings I'm going to be showing, it, you will see that there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. All of these, I mean, um, aren't just begun onto the huge canvas. There's a lot of prep work that went be, you know, um, behind it before they, they even started. They didn't just uh, start throwing characters on the, on the canvas like you would throw um, furniture in a room. No, they created a floor plan first, and then they started putting all the furniture in. So one of the things that uh, we've already talked about before uh, with dividing space is the rule of thirds. And I really like this rule of thirds. I don't use the golden rectangle. That's another one a lot of people use. It seems kind of, it's just, wow, it's just too esoteric, too hard to get into, too complex. Rule of thirds will hit, you know, much of, you know, what we're talking about here. And this will keep you really the main reason that we use the rule of thirds. And let me, let me illustrate it real quick here. Here's a picture plane. Let me change to red and rule of thirds would be dividing. That is not a third dividing your picture paint plane horizontally and vertically into thirds. And a lot of times you can just do this by eye. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's your rule of thirds. And what this can do for you is it can keep you from making a lot of, you know, basic mistakes in your composition. Those basic, basic mistakes would be uh, dividing your like dividing your image directly in half. So a no-no would be divide in half. So if you have, here's your image here, and you have a building here, right? And there's the horizon line maybe some trees or buildings over here and a road. You've basically um, divided this image in half, just like that. And that's not a very pleasing composition. An another way, uh, another time you'll see this is when you're doing a landscape painting or someone's done a landscape painting and you'll see the horizon line this like kind of perfect line right across. That's dividing the picture plane right in half. And if you're telling a particular story here, and that's another thing I'll say, is these are guidelines. These are principles. And if your story demands they get broken, then break them. So if you want a very boring, very sudden, like just not a lot happening composition, things are just sitting there, you know, very slow, um, you know, if that's the kind of idea that you want to get across, yes, divide your picture plane in half and that's fine. But for general pictures that you're doing, you know, trying to uh, remove that one of those errors with the rule of thirds is good. So don't divide the picture plane in half. So what's what this is doing is we will give the viewer something like a focus when, when everything has, you know, a, 
you know, very clear division in these halves in some way. There's not a lot of focus. Everything has the same emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're giving the viewer something to focus on. So if I choose maybe a, a lower third for the horizon line, right? And one of my actors, let's say, is a cloud up here that's kind of on the third. And then a person that's at the edge of the horizon. We have specific focus. Even without the cloud or the person, just the horizon line. We know that we're focusing on the sky. This is the big focus, was on the sky, not the ground. So that's, you know, and, and when when you're planning a painting and you're thinking, okay, what, what do I want to paint? If I want to paint clouds, uh, you're not going to put the horizon line at the very top. You're going to put it close to the bottom. So you can focus on that. So rule of thirds is going to help you with this. So you, you, Anything that you compose, you get out your a rule of thirds, you throw it over there, and you're like, okay, how can I like, move these things around to give focus? So try not to bisect the picture plane, definitely. All right, the next portion of this, whoops. And I need, I need more image space. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to image, resize canvas, or you could use control alt, alt C as in cat. And I'm going to change the height to 4,000. So we're going to double the height on this. So 4,000, and then I'm going to change the anchor to the top. So it goes straight down. There we go. And I'm working directly on the background. So the background will fill in. The interesting thing about Krita is you know, if I zoom all the way out on this, you'll see that I only have one layer, okay, which is the background layer. And if I'm drawing on this, I can hit delete on everything. It'll go away, but my background's still there. Okay, so you can draw on top of your main background without it really affecting your background. But if you go in here and let's say that you want to you want to erase something, you will erase that background color. So it's pretty interesting how that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, better to just get in the habit of putting a layer down. I did that incorrectly, so we will work with it. All right, the next thing we're gonna be working with is image, edge, and lines. And I kind of got into this a bit, but I have some notes on this that I'm going by uh, so that I can be more precise with my words and give you a better idea. Shift B for a straight line. So never draw to the edge of the paper. You can't make lines that are affected. You can't make lines that are affected by the edge. I mean, Holmes, the Ringer Music Show. And I'm Cole Kushner from Dissect. And Charles oh, and I are totally got an ad from Spotify. I totally didn't realize that ad uh, Spotify had ads. That's interesting. <laughs> I changed up the music. Uh, I went to Spotify. And I'm piping that in, but okay. We'll let that play out before I bring the music back up. Sorry about that. So draw your own edges so you can draw through the edge, basically. So what am I what do I mean about that? Um so beginning artists tend to line up everything against the edge of the picture plane. So let's say that you, you pull out any photo from your camera on your cell phone or, or whatever it, it may be. And what you'll see is you're not going to see a lot of photos where Let's say you're in the kitchen and the cabinets are all lined up this way perfectly. And here's the counter space lined up that way. And, you know, the edge of the refrigerator or something is here. 
and another counter just like that. You're not going to see a lot of that. Uh, what you're going to see is a kitchen that has nothing but angles everywhere. Your cabinetry is going to be going this way and have perspective to it. Maybe you see a little bit of the bottom of it. Here's your um, countertop and the sink is right here, right? There's the sink pouring water in. And then maybe a door to the garage is here or something. I don't know. This is kind of like my kitchen. So you have all these angles and not much of anything is going to be lined up with the image edge. And being cognizant of that and is, is really important to keep your designs, uh, your compositions um, dynamic. So I'm keeping them very dynamic. Um, what, you know, why is this important? Because we are, we don't stand rigid all the time. It, we look at the world at angles. Our heads are on a neck. <laughs> As I draw an egg. So here we are. my wonderful drawing <laughs> of a person. It's like Pictionary. We're not looking for super awesome. So here we are. We have this neck and our heads turn all the time. We're constantly in this angle. Our heads are constantly turning <laughs> and shifting. And we look at the world this way. Because I'm having fun with really bad drawings. <laughs> so this is how we look at the world. And we want to keep that naturalistic kind of idea within our, our art. Um, so always kind of look at, you know, imagery and how you can push your perspective and keep your, your any of these lines away from, you know, uh, against the edge. Unless it makes a lot of sense unless uh, you need that, if you need that calmness, if you need that um, uh, contrast. For example, I mean, we, I, heck, I can pull up uh, NCYF, The Passing of Robin Hood. And we see a lot of, let me, let me turn this to red. We'll see this edge up here at the top. We see the wall's edge that kind of comes down. Uh, this window is lined up perfectly. Even the bed has this perfect line. So what this would create is a space, a calm space for all of the action that's happening here to sit on top of and to, to be much more... Um, so it will stand out more. I mean, we got the curve of this awesome bow. We have these angles here, the angle of the sheet. So we get into all these implied angles and everything, even the light is pointing towards Robin Hood, right? We got arms, we got legs, and we're all kind of fitting within this place and like everything is centered here. And there is a, a very specific choice by NCYF to use those straight lines in the background so that it didn't inf interfere with all the organic shapes that were going on here. So important to, to keep that in mind is image edges and lines. So quick break here. I'm going to talk about something I'm very happy with is the the course or the downloads for this course this live stream is live now and it's going to be part of the description within the live stream you can see more information on that on my website chrisbevan.com if you want to but it'd be easier just to go to the the notes in the live stream and add it to all the live streams 
and uh, here is traditional to digital. Yay! I already have five uh, of our episodes up here with all of the downloads in there. Some of these downloads include the shortcut cheat sheet that we we created, or that I created, and we we did a lot of those shortcuts on the the live stream. Um, all of my Krita files that I work on, I will be sharing. I uh, <clears throat> from what was it yesterday? We did uh, composition. I need to upload that one. It's uploading soon, and the composition or, or the design process sheet. Let me see if it if it's still in my recent. No, it's not in my recent, but the design process sheet that I created during the live stream or showed you during the live stream is going to be on that one. So I'll be uploading that today. And this is going to continue to grow. And what's great about it is it's only $10. But if you are on the live stream, which you are right now, you can use my special 50% off coupon. So, and that is CB. 50 off so 50 off i believe that's what it is yeah cb 50 off i need to check that <laughs> let me go and see the gumroad product that i created yeah cb 50 off so if you use that on Gumroad, and I'll be putting the link in the notes. It'll only be five bucks. Five bucks not for just what you see here, but five bucks for all the resources that I'll be creating through every one of these live streams. And if you guys know anything about me as an artist, this is what I do every day. And oh, I haven't updated in a while. I need, I got like five days I need to update, but every single day, I do something and this purchase, the resources for this live stream will continue to grow every single day. It will be your ultimate resource for everything that I know and that everything that I share uh, there would be awesome. Five bucks. Yeah, for all that. I wanted to, it to be the most crazy value that you can get because right now, and, and a lot of artists don't have a bunch of money, but I think we can swing, swing five bucks to help me out for a lot of this because <laughs> I haven't really made a dollar on any of this yet. And that would be great. So CB 50 off. All right. That's the end of my commercial. Sorry about that. Uh, now negative space. This is a lot of fun. Negative space. And if you have negative space, you're going to have what? You're also going to have positive space. Can't have negative without the positive. That's everywhere. That's in life and everything. Got to have the negative and the positive. And I'm going to start hitting uh, our, our shortcut, which is shift R to get these boxes much better laid out like that. Look how perfect that is. That's awesome. Negative space. Here's some good examples of um, boring and not so boring. Just very simple. Let's do this. So let's say that I have a horizon line here and then our main subject person is coming straight at us here. And then I'll fill this. That's an example of boring, right? So just flat lines, one cir circle thing in the center. It's fairly boring. Now, if you're going for boring, that's actually really good, right? Like I said, these are principles that you can use to tell a story. I'm always gonna remind you of that. It's all about the story. So whatever works for your story, that's what you use. But if you're not going for boring, you want something interesting then this would be her, your horizon line. And this would be the person. Maybe they're running down or something. Here's the person here. Their arms flying back. They're running down this building. Their knee is coming forward, right? 
this is the worst drawing ever, everyone says as they're watching the live stream. But it doesn't matter because it's illustrating a point, which is that the left side is boring and the right side is not. And what we're looking at here is this outline. This is the negative space. This is the negative space. One is a lot less boring than the other, definitely. And the rest of it, that's all positive space. So thinking about your negative and positive space. And this is what, where thumbnails come in to play. Very simple thumbnails are fantastic for identifying negative and positive space. And looking at a lot of examples of this on ArtStation can only help you. I want to look at a few examples because I, I really enjoy looking at ArtStation, honestly. So I, you can create collections on ArtStation and I have one that's just called Thumbnails that I look at all the time. We're just going to pick one out. I like picking the most simplistic ones that I can find. There's a lot of these that have a lot of gradients and things like that, but I want to pick out the ones that, there you go. I love this one. This is the artist, Michael Lasik. He's a professional artist, senior concept artist at Zenimax Online Studios. Fantastic. Wow. And look at all these compositions. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I could zoom in on this. Nope. Um, but even if you're 20 feet away from your screen, if you're looking at this on a phone, you can see that all these, th there's no boring things going on here. <clears throat> these, this is, I mean, a perfect, I'm gonna hit uh, Windows key shift S, okay? And that's gonna give me the ability to select part of the screen and copy this, okay? This is something I'd like to, to show you. And then I can go back into Krita and I can hit paste and I can just say as web, as monitor, doesn't really matter, sRGB is good. That's for color space. And I can just bring this right in to what I'm doing. So anything <clears throat> that you're working on, go to the web. Command shift S and on uh, Mac, I believe it's, uh, or no, uh, on Mac it's um, command shift three or four. On Windows, it's window key, Windows key shift S and you can select and you can paste things in right away. And then you can study this. Uh, let's pick out one of these. Let's like this uh, guy here. I'm gonna create a new layer so I don't mess up his compositions. This is very similar than, to what I just created, okay? And what, instead of outlining the positive space, space I'm gonna outline the negative space because that's what we're talking about. negative space. And then all these kind of negative spaces in here with these lines. I mean, in, in this with this composition, I could just count the whole bottom as a negative space because those lines aren't the best. I mean, those lines are the, the most necessary, right? Um, it's the overall composition that's the most important. So you could take a lot of those little lines out in here and the composition would still be fantastic. So these are great, it's great resources. That's, that's another reason why digital is so important for traditional artists is because you can quickly and easily just get into here and look at negative positive space and all that kind of stuff. Anywhere, <clears throat> any piece of art that you absolutely love. There we go. Okay, so that's negative space and basically positive space. I'm gonna go control. Oops, not on there. No, we'll keep that there. This document may be huge. It, get, it, it could get way too huge. We'll see. I may have to decrease it down later. But I'll get back to a black color. <clears throat> POV and camera angle. So let's talk about that next. Another way for dividing space. Let 
Oops. A great example of this, which I talked about before, is going to be a cityscape. Always uh, thinking about who, where your viewer is placed, okay? So if, if you think about a top-down approach, maybe there's a street, okay? And this is, I'm just looking top-down here, so this is kind of like that floor plan. And I wanna place my viewer right here, okay? And these are buildings on the left and right side, and they're gonna be looking down the street. I'm like, okay, so that's, that's kind of where they're gonna be looking from. But then you also need to think about, um, are they large? Are they small? Are the buildings large and buildings small? And how is that gonna change things? So the horizon line or the end of the street could be way down there. And then we throw out the, the lines of the building at these buildings at this kind of angle, right? And then we fisheye lens this whole kind of building structures so that they have this crazy kind of look to them, right? Crazy composition. This is like five point composition, right? And we're creating a sense of space and size here. I could even have thrown the, um, uh, the horizon line down a bit lower to really make the viewer look small. Uh, and then I could put, you know, something huge right here, like right next to you or something like that. And so your viewer feels tiny in this, this aspect or a bit smaller. Um, a more extreme way of doing that would be a one point perspective. So the, and, and you know, this, I'm thinking about comic books here, right? So your viewer, your, and your point of view is going to be looking up at buildings. And the reason why I'm using buildings is because, well, pretty simple perspective in a lot of ways, right? It's very easy to understand that what you're looking at is, is far away. So little tiny windows up there going across and getting bigger as they go down. Looking up this building. <laughs> it looks like a person. I tried to do that. I'm trying to draw it really quickly. Um, probably don't need all those extra lines. But they're looking up. So there's your, your point of view. Maybe there's a cloud up there that they're looking up to <laughs> as well. But thinking about point of view and camera angle and how it pertains to what story, your narrative. How does that pertain to your story? Um, if you want to show a really, you know, a person that feels tiny, a person that feels small, change up your POV camera angle. If you want them to be large, if you want them to be on top of the world, then put them on top of that building looking down, right? Are they flying? You know, if they're just walking down the street, you got to make sure that uh, your perspective is right. So it doesn't look like that they're flying over the over the road. OK, so that's important to do as well. POV camera angle. That's another one. And I used up all of my room again. So I'm going to go to see if I can remember the key command. I, be, I think it was shift alt C. No, control alt C. There it is. Control Alt C to resize your canvas, and we're going to go down another thousand. So five thousand. Change my anchor; it goes down, and then my background color will actually go down with it. This is uh, I'm working on 150 DPI, so it probably won't be too big. Next, we're going to look at, and yes, we're still in dividing space. I've been talking for at least an hour now. And maybe it's because, um, okay, hello. Why can't I write on my, there we go. Sometimes uh, Krita does that where all of a sudden you can't write. It's kind of weird. Um, we're going to look at exit lines. 
and drawing through. So normally you want to avoid exit lines, but what are exit lines? Um, well, you want to avoid exit lines that go through corners. Uh, corners really tend to be eye traps for your viewer. For example, if I have you know a vertical piece this way or a horizontal piece maybe. Now let's just work on the vertical piece. I want to avoid, and I probably did it up here. Here's a good example. What I did up here, there's a good example of an exit line like these and right here too. So the edge of this building is passing right through the corner. I got a lot of things going right through the corners there. Uh, we want to kind of avoid that. So any, any applied lines? We'll get into applied lines later, but if you have objects, that lead this way, they're really kind of leading out of the corner. Like I did before, if you have a street that goes off into the distance, you know, kind of avoid those those eye traps there. Um, you can flatten out your composition a bit too much, make it look a little bit uh, boring if you're doing that. So maybe you do something that avoids the, the edges altogether, you know. So you want to avoid that. Uh, and it could imbalance your image a lot easier. Oh, thanks, Thinker. You're my first customer. Will the resources be on your website or will they remain on Gumroad? It's all in Gumroad. What's great about Gumroad is you could uh, link to the live streams directly from Gumroad. You can download there. If, any, if I put any other videos on Gumroad, you can read them or watch them from there, like if I upload them directly. And any of the PDFs that I upload of what I talked about, uh, you can read them for directly on Gumroad as well. So Gumroad's actually really nice. Um, I tried setting this up on my website, courses and stuff. I use WordPress and it was, it, yeah, it was a pain. I decided I'm not doing this. I'm not going to deal with all the payments and security for payments and all the other kind of stuff. It's just too much. And I was going to go to Squarespace, but Squarespace is just expensive. Oh my gosh, is it expensive. So avoiding those exit lines wherever you can. And now drawing through. I did some examples of this really quickly um, in some cases. And this is just a practice to help you with your drawing, um, with ellipses, angles, uh, perspective mainly on everything that you do. Uh, if I'm doing, hmm, let's say you have a box in a room, okay? I could stay within the lines and I could draw this box like this and I could probably get the perspective somewhat good right and it'd be fine there so this is the box okay my ugly little box um, but what would be better is if instead of just drawing it within the lines if I just used my pen to do the entire box this way. And that will help you get all of your angles down because this box is going to have perspective. Eventually these lines that that fade out should meet. We'll get into perspective <clears throat> with a lot of with within a lot of this eventually. That all those lines should meet somewhere on a vanishing point, two different vanishing points is a two point perspective. Uh, and when you draw through something, it's only going to help you with your drawing. So that's important. We still have a few things left that I want to talk about that I made notes for. Probably a bit too much. Yeah, I think it's a bit too much. I'm going to end this stream here. But what I will do is I'll 
go over what we're going to be talking about next. So I'm going to say next live stream. Exclamation point. We're going to be talking about um, small, medium, huge. Small, medium, huge. And what that means within dividing space within your picture plane, within your compositions. You've probably heard this before, straights and curves. A lot of drawing. It's part of uh, space division as well, or dividing space. You can, we'll also be using the acronym CSI. So, well, it's actually not an acronym. C is like a C curve, an S curve, and a straight, right? Straights and curves. Then we're going to be talking about scale, which is a lot of fun. Scale how to get things to look just huge and where to use them. We kind of hit on that with a little bit of the POV, POV um, and camera angle. We're gonna talk about uh, tangents and, you know, avoiding them or using them. It's actually a lot of fun with tangents, uh, looking at some examples of tangents. And then implied lines. Wow, I got a lot to cover. Implied lines are a lot of fun as well. We'll see a lot of it in um, other examples. Shape. Then simple, uh, and then Oh man. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to stop the whole Spotify thing. It's I'm getting ads and it's really annoying because I don't subscribe to Spotify. So shape, simple and complex shapes. For example, like a simplifying hair is a big thing. Um, organic shapes versus, and, and keeping them random uh, versus uh, non-organic uh, geometric shapes. And so that one will be a kind of big. So this is what we're going to talk about or try and get through in the next stream. Small, medium, huge, straights and curves, CSI, scale, tangents, implied lines, and shape. So principles of composition. Let's do a quick overview. Okay. Composition is all about bringing order to chaos. Check out the svslearn.com creative composition with Will Terry course. It's fantastic. A lot of what I'm saying here is from that course. You can even do it for free if you just, you know, sign up for 14 days and work your butt off for 14 days and do all, all of the, the things through that. It would be fantastic. Um, the major principles of composition are dividing space, balance, unity, and emphasis. We're talking just about dividing space today, and we went through rule of thirds, um, image edges, and lines. Let's just go through. We... Um, Rule of thirds, image edges and lines, how we look at the world, negative space, POV, camera angles, exit lines, and drawing through. Well, I thought I covered more than that. So I just talk a lot, I guess. That's what it is. And then if you get a chance, if you want to, if what I'm providing here today for you is fantastic and you want to take advantage of all the resources that I'll be sharing, check out my Gumroad on this, traditional to digital uh, it's just, you can watch these live streams for free. Obviously they're on YouTube. Uh, but if you want to get all the downloads, uh, $10 for that, or you can, if you're here right now, you have learned this, the special CB 50 off to get 50% off that for only five bucks. So great, con great, uh, value there because it will continue to grow. Now your homework for tonight, for today is going to be doing something like this. This is very simple. Take a, a painting or a piece or whatever that you love, that you enjoy a lot, and do some of these um, things over it. So this is an example on my website. You can see that here, this is uh, one of my daily art. This is like May 6, 2022 when I was doing this. 
and I love this, uh, The Passing of Robin Hood by N.C. Wyeth, and I took it through all of what we're talking about here today. Rule of thirds, image edge and lines, negative space, camera angles, uh, exit lines, and just really kind of studying everything. So you can get an idea of what we're going to be talking about in next stream and the following streams here as well, right? And I even found some tangents uh, that you want to avoid. I found some tangents on his painting. So things that we can improve with a master, right? But just keep it simple for yourself. Oops, let me get back to that. And pick something you love and then work up rule of thirds on it. Or a few items. Go to ArtStation. Look at uh, some of the thumbnails that a lot of these amazing artists create and uh, outline negative and positive space. Yeah, collect some images. That's also important. Collect artist images into a folder somewhere. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Happy New Year. And I can't wait to continue this on in 2023 and continue this to grow and grow and grow. Uh, thanks a lot for showing up. And thank you. Thank you for being my first customer. Yay. I, I need like an applause thing <laughs> to come in. So I made more. Th I made it more than a dollar. I made a dollar. This is the first time I've made any money on anything that I've done on YouTube. <laughs> and it's all to you, Thinker. I appreciate you and I appreciate you showing up every day. I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. I will share this soon. Keep watching the gum road. I'll be I'll be updating it every day almost. Well not every day. Maybe three or four days I'll update it. And I'm ram I'm just rambling now. Anyway. Thanks guys. Have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow.